Hello there. The censorship continues. How can it be right to remove from public discourse that which is said in Parliament? When an elected representative of a democratic nation such as the UK stands up in Parliament and talks, why can it not be published on all social media outlets for everyone to see? Surely that is the democratic way. Surely, even if you vehemently disagree with that politician and what they say, it should not be censored by anyone. But that's what keeps happening to the MP for North West Leicestershire, Andrew Bridgen, as another of his speeches has been removed from this platform. Now, if he is speaking as many claim, then why are the other MPs not directly confronting him with the facts within the debating chamber? After all, that is exactly why they are there, isn't it? And the fact that they do not tells us a lot about those MPs and maybe about the subject matter itself. Maybe they can't make a case against the content of his speeches. And worse, avoiding issues like this or trying to bury them allows voters to start questioning the point of having MPs in London if they can't confront these sticky problems head on. And that leads to all manner of conspiracy theories along the lines of what else are they hiding from us by refusing to acknowledge and debate it? And more to the point, don't Bridgen's voters have a democratic right under the freedom of expression to find out exactly what their elected representative is saying? Remember, freedom of expression is as much about information consumption and seeking it out as it is about information production and dissemination. And where the pronouncements of elected representatives is concerned, it's doubly important. And private companies must be able to publish this stuff with no fear of repercussions from anyone. And further, some out there won't want to hear this, but what if he's absolutely right? What if it's later proved that we should have been listening, but instead allowed it to be buried? What if any lessons that should have been learned and applied were not? And as a result, more people needlessly suffered. Just so that some people can smugly watch censorship take place to reinforce their beliefs. Beliefs that turn out to be false. What then? What happens to justice then? Censorship of our politicians never works at any level. And talking about justice, a lady called Liz to protect her real identity, a survivor of abuse, has been successful in the civil courts in winning a £425,000 case against her abuser, helped by the campaign group Hearts of Oak. With the solicitor involved, Robin Tilbrook, calling this a landmark case that could open the doors for many similar cases across the land. We have lit up the target, he told me with Baroness Cox saying that this great legal victory should bring hope to many other survivors. Now I'm hoping to have an update chat tomorrow with Robin Tilbrook, who also happens to be the leader of the English Democrats. And the war on the motorists continues. The latest being that London's Islington Council has decided to follow North Somerset painting wiggly lines on the roads in Clevedon by installing some wavy Disneyland style of curbing to slow and restrict car drivers going about their lawful business. With the Mail also saying, The radical redesign of the quaint 18th century Georgian street in Islington, which follows the low traffic neighbourhood trend of getting cars off Britain's roads, will ban drivers in the mornings and early afternoon. Yes, no cars between 8.15 and 9.15 in the morning, as well as 3pm to 3.45pm. And no lorries over 3.5 tonnes either. But looking at the images, one wonders if the dustbin lorry can get down there, as well as fire engines and the like. At least Charlton Place will look pretty and be almost vehicle-free. 
with the traffic forced to use other routes, no doubt. Now, according to the spiel given to motorists, money raised from fines, etc. would be used to improve the roads in some way, but according to the Mail report, this does not seem to have happened. Most of it seems to have ended up in the general tax pot. Just shows that without the motorists being soaked at every level, councils and governments cannot survive on general taxation alone. So, as cars are driven from the roads... Who will they tax next? Well, there's always the e-scooterists, cyclists and pedestrians, of course. Oh, and don't forget all those hideously expensive electric vehicles driven by the well-heeled. So Hamza Yousaf is the new SNP leader and will become the first minister of Scotland to replace Nicola Sturgeon tomorrow, barring Holyrood MSPs rejecting him, of course. But we can live in hope. However, from my perspective, this will give a nice welcome boost to the pro-UK unionist community in Scotland. I mean, having someone as ineffective and inefficient running Scotland as Humza Yousaf is not going to endear the SNP to Scottish voters. What Sturgeon did with his help as health minister was woeful enough. What he will end up doing is pretty much finishing the party off, one suspects especially if a few skeletons come rattling out of the cupboard in the next few weeks and months, like that matter of the missing 600,000 quid, for example. So was Jeremy Corbyn a friend of Keir Starmer or not? Well, going by the latest news, the current opposition leader might have misled us over this by once calling Corbyn his friend because it transpires that Starmer is set to change the Labour Party rules to prevent Corbyn from standing for the Islington North seat under the Labour banner at the next general election. Now, what should surprise us all is that Starmer fully supported Corbyn and his hard-left agenda and called him a friend. But now that he's trying to grab votes from the middle ground, he's denying Corbyn something that will alienate him with the hard left of his own party. And would the Momentum Brigade just stand back and let Starmer water down their communist policies without a fight? And if they do lose, will they stick around? One wonders if Corbyn will try and lead a breakaway Momentum-based party and take the hard left of the Labour Party with him so giving him a party to stand for in the next election instead of being an independent. The Tories will be hoping so, given that a Humza Yousaf SNP leadership win in Scotland could give Labour an opening to start taking Westminster seats in Scotland. Therefore, a potentially split Labour party could help offset that in the rest of the UK. But the real message here is that if Starmer calls anyone his friend... They'd better have their backs to the wall while he's around.